Welcome to Play Pause Turn. In this podcast, we discuss all things to do with TV, films, games and literature. We give our thoughts on the media we've been enjoying, old or new, and comment on anything topical. Now, um, today there's myself, John, and with me is Alex. Hello, Alex. Hey, John. Uh, just the two of us today. Um, and here's my intro question for you. Alex, it's quite a simple one. All right. Belter or inner? <laughs> uh, I would be a... Um, yeah, I'd be an inner. Okay, well, I'll have to go for belter then, won't I? You don't have to. You um, could, it could be... Well, it makes it more interesting. Yeah, and dirty all right. inner. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> I don't think I've got the physique of a belter at the moment, but I'm working on that. Um, so as you can as you can probably guess, if you are a fan already of the Expanse, we're going to be discussing uh, now that we've uh, reached the end of season six of the Expanse, and uh, I'm very sad that it's gone. Um, myself and Alex are going to be having a good long chat about uh, the whole the whole series as a, as a whole. We're going to look at the sort of the best bits, uh, our thoughts of um, how we how we enjoyed it, maybe sort of. Uh, Focus on a few of the the characters and the actors in the series, and if we get time to actually think for think about what's going to happen next, if anything happens next. So, um, let's start off by if people have never seen The Expanse, um, I think we're I think we're going to be okay in terms of spoilers here because uh, we can gloss over anything too spoilery. It's a bit tricky, this isn't it, really? Because it's six seasons. Um, so, so perhaps we can give our thoughts on uh, the overall series uh, and maybe a brief uh, overview of what's going on in the the Expanse universe before we go even deeper. Do you think that's a good idea? Yeah, we can do that. So do you want me to start? Yeah, I mean, now, now let's, just, let's just give our background here because I've seen uh, all six seasons of The Expanse, as has mm-hmm. Alex. But Alex has also written, re- read, not written, read um, all the books, Alex? Uh, so I've read all of the books except one, um, which is Leviathan Thor's which Falls, which I've started but not finished. And this so. is by James A. Corey, isn't it? Which is, yes, is that's actually right. a, is actually a pseudonym for two of the writers, which are actually the showrunners for the series as well. Is that correct? Yes, yes. So it's Daniel um, Abram and Ty Frank. Um, any any idea why they call themselves James A. Corey? It just sounds cool, or. There is, there is a, there is a um, yeah. The name is meant to emulate many a space opera, uh, opera writer of the seventies. Ian so, M. Banks, I suppose. And yeah, that's it. Le that's exactly. Gwyn, right. I don't know. So that okay. no, but that's that's really that was their thinking. Is hey, we'll have a pseudonym and let's make it sound epic, like like those of the the seventies sci fi uh, greats. And um, I think they filled filled some of their 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 boots. Um, I don't think it's 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 you know quite the breadth of some of them like that. Has has, has Robert Heinlein got a, a middle letter that he normally writes signs off with? I don't know. That's a good question. I Robert Robert H Heinlein or Robert? Yeah. A. Heinlein? I don't know. That's something we could look up. Um, okay, so uh, my my understanding, my overview understanding uh, of the expanse. Robert A. Is <laughs> Robert A. Heinlein. There we go. It wasn't far off. Uh, I'm a big Highland fan. I just yes, can't remember his too. little letter. Um, so Earth is, is this is set in kind of around the year 2350, and um, there's been uh, a natural kind of prediction of how we're treating the world right now. So the Earth, Earth is very hot. Um, I remember that from one of the seasons when one of the characters landed on Earth. That's how I remember this really. Um, the, oceans the, have risen. That's right. Land land prices are very expensive in, on Earth. Um, there's a lot of good technology, which means there's no need for things like manual labour and farming and construction. So a lot of jobs have gone into space. Yes. Um, but most people on Earth are too poor to get to space. So um, there's a lot of kind of big corporations in space. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So getting a job in space is is your ticket to yeah. um, a good, uh, you know, a, a reasonable life. Whereas yeah. if you're if you're stuck on Earth without a job then it's you're existing but not 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 anything more than that um then we've got mars which is the mars congressional republic i think they're called Mm -hmm. um and i think they're all they're based on a un established colony yes that's right well yeah they Uh, were established by the un um uh, so essentially uh, uh, earth um uh, populated mars 
as a colony and then uh, Mars split off from the uh, from from the Earth and the UN um, wanted independence and basically Earth said no uh, and that's that's the that's the that was the main I mean that's common it happens everywhere doesn't it yeah um, you kind of uh, we we want to stand on our own two feet no you can't oh so okay I, think, I mean you could do that at any time yeah. yeah I mean this this all happened a couple of hundred years before the series we're watching if I understand yeah right. so it did and and um what happened was that um there was a risk of um essentially um uh, uh, being uh, uh invaded by by yeah. uh, earth again so they strongly militarized um took the um uh, resources that are on mars um and basically used that to help build uh, a navy uh, in space um uh, and and to to kind of it, it eventually it grew to rival the earth uh, navy but the the principle of it was basically to try and hold your hold their own Against so they'd Earth. have to pay Earth taxes as well. Then, that's exactly right. Yeah, exactly right. That. And then I mean, a lot of sorry, Carol. Well, well, that's it. No, that's exactly it. And they had this vision of terraforming uh, Mars, which uh, is a multi generation task that that, that that they wanted to start and made yeah. efforts to start on. So, okay. Um, so, from what I understand, again, I, a lot of this I'm gleaning from watching this series and comparing. Um, Mars's um, navy is smaller but more technologically advanced. Earth's space navy is larger, but a little more, a little more sort of old juggernauts. If that makes sense. Well, they're a bit, they're a bit more sort of they're larger but less. Um, a lot, a lot of the series talks about all the sort of the technology that Mars are doing, which everyone else are really jealous of. So I presume that's kind of the balance between the two. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, say yeah. that. Yeah, that's that's a good way of summing up. Okay, and then you've got the belt, which is the the, the astro belt, and that has um, basically there's kind of almost like a indentured um, population there where they can't leave, um, and they can't uh, they've got to live. Um, but the biggest kind of uh, factor for all the belters, as they're called. Is water, isn't it? You know, water required to power all their engines and provide their atmosphere and drink and wash. So, water's like the big thing, isn't it? Um, yes, that's right. And they're and they're sending water across the solar system as well. So they're all run. All those operations are run by corporations, and they're just like modern day life. They're run as cheaply and as profitably as possible, which means there's a lot of people who are almost slaves, really, of low wages and high stress. Um, so. I mean, there wasn't. There were anti-slavery laws, I think, in, in, originally. I'm, I'm, again, I'm getting this from a few notes I've written about this. Mm-hmm. Um, the belters have a different physiology because they live in low gravity, um, so they have brittle bones um, and like long arms and legs. Because I remember this from one of the scenes later on in the, the first season. Yes, you see, you see a belter's physiology, and it all becomes a plot point as well at one point. Well, this um, is it, and and the thing yeah. is that. Um, Humans are spending a lot more time up in space, but having yep. a baby in space is really risky. So, right. so um, because the body's not meant to not have uh, gravity, um, yeah. and even when you're on a space station, uh, the gravity is not uh, the same level as it would be when you're on in Earth. So, sure. so what would happen is that if you They're adapting exactly, so it, so if you were um, potentially pregnant, you would have to go to um, you know, you, there's a huge risk in staying where you are. So you, what you'd have to do is basically get to somewhere like Ceres, Ceres or somewhere that's a planet that's yeah. got a reasonable um, uh, gravity, uh, gravity um, yeah. and try and stay there. But of course, to do that, you have to have enormous wealth. And so, um, oh, God. yeah, if you don't have so that, there's there's obviously um, treatments and stuff. But what's what's yeah. interesting is that uh, you know the belters' uh, physiology has really changed, and so they're 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 they are taller and slimmer. But that's you know that's because of the lack of um, uh, lack of gravity. Um, but it also means that they can't go to the the to Earth because if they did, the gravity would crush them. Yeah. 
Um, so it's a really interesting. Yeah, it's a real it's something you think about, but it, catch twenty two, isn't it, for them? Really, yeah. almost. I mean, the trouble is that that you know, making babies is the easiest and least expensive form of entertainment, and so mm-hmm. I would imagine they have an issue with population anyway. That's um, right. So, so Belters live entirely on spaceships, and they're always, you know, I guess they have a whole culture of being engineers and always being very careful about their air and their water and, you know, checking the seals, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but it also probably makes them quite a, a tough bunch, really. Um, when you constantly live in a high-risk environment, you must that must change the way you behave. Um, I, 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 on a side note, I really, really like... Um, the Belter language, the dialect, the Lang, mm-hmm. Lang Belter, mm-hmm. uh, which I understand in the books is called Belter Creole, isn't it? That's right, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think um, the writers developed the Belter Creole, but they got someone else in to develop language for the TV show, I think a guy called Nick Farmer. Mm. Um, and some, I think from the sounds of it, apart from a few phrases, the two languages are t- entirely distinct. So that's yes. really interesting that they changed all that. And I wonder if that's to do with mis- cultural misappropriation or something. I don't know. Um, but I, I love the fact that there, there's a, throughout the series, um, you get this, this like consistent dialect, uh, which is actually, it, it very, it's a very beautiful language, I think. It's very, and actually, they always have to train the actors to speak it as well. So I think that's really clever. Yeah, what what's nice is is it's it does stand out, but yeah. also it's so it's distinct enough. It's it's it is a proper dialect, yeah. um, and I think that that really helps add to the the show a lot actually, um, and and I think even when you're thinking about some of the uh, people who, um, you know, I'm thinking particularly. Um, uh, Kamina Drummer, for example, her accent yeah. is really uh, distinct. Um, yeah. But but it, it feels naturally uh, Belter compared to yeah. any anyone else, and so that's it. Really helps sort of bed you into the the um, characters and the, their lore and everything. So it's really good. I'm trying to remember the name of the actor, Jared. Jared. He he played a big um, leader in the series. I his surname is now. He has a really good accent as well. Um, you have to help me out here. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm looking tra- at trawling up. through the, the cast list, but he's, uh, he's he was recently in the Foundation TV series as well, wasn't he? God, he was, yes, yeah, he absolutely was. <laughs> um, I'll give me a minute, I'll find him. Yeah, so um, yeah, so that's brilliant. I, I like the fact that they've got this. It's, it's really, I mean, this is what's really taken me by the series. It, what's really got me interested is is a it's a, it's a TV series in space that doesn't have aliens. Well. No, no, it doesn't have any. You know, you've 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 got a you've got a kind of a contention between three different groups of humans, and it's it makes it very believable. It, it's a very believable universe that could possibly happen, and I like that. Um, and the uh, and the last series that had no aliens in was Firefly, uh, which made it in, you know an interesting jump from that series to this in terms of the 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 idea of actually you know we could have a TV series without um, green eyed aliens, green faced aliens, and I like that. I, it gives it gives it a different look. Um, Jared Harris, that's correct. Jared <laughs> Harris, um, great actor. So, you, yeah, so you've got the belt, you've got the belters. You've also got this um, group called the Outer Planets Alliance, which are the OPA. Yes, and they're they're kind of like an early version of what Mars was like when it first arrived on Mars. They, they want their own independence. Uh, they want, I think, probably more rights uh, when it comes to the, the production, you know, the, the uh, mining of, of H2O in the belt. Mm-hmm. Um, they, the OPA becomes quite a big um, kind of strata of, of plot amongst the series, which we'll talk about later on. You've got all the space stations <coughs> as well. Um, I think um, the Outer Planets Alliance is the main organisation that advocates for change yes. uh, in terms of political status more than anything else. They want to have equal status to Earth and Mars because at the moment the belters are treated like sort of second class citizens aren't they really is kind of i think the problem is they they don't have the leverage that mars had yeah so so um and so that's that's fleet really have they yeah so that's why anything yeah. that they do has to be is is much more um you know violence and um uh you know it, it's a yeah. lot more physical um that whereas mars mars could you know annex themselves and they had resource uh, availability for resources, whereas actually, you know, they still on the in the belt. They still rely on food um, from Earth and um, 
obviously water and uh, air so so you can do quite a lot you know technically but there's still a huge reliance on things like uh, getting ice from from yeah. moons and making that work and it's still not enough so um yeah, so I think that's that kind of desperation is really clear from them. I think that's it's a difficult symbiosis that they have because they mm. need their resources for their fleets. But yes, if they're at odds with the the, the, the providers of those sources, it's yeah, it's, a, it's a really compelling uh, scenario for a TV yeah, series. Yeah, and they don't own it as well. That's the the difficulty. Yeah. So you have like a mining um, station, but it's owned by Earth, mm. and it's the seri- series owned by Earth. Yes. Yeah, so the space stations essentially, because of where they are lo- location-wise, they are essentially lawless. But yeah. a lot of the owners of the space stations have like their own security companies. Yes, that's right. They'll uh, have a security one, detail. One that I, I I can remember just because it's it's mentioned a lot in one of the first and second seasons is Star Helix. Yes. Um, which I think because they have contracts essentially, like 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 balances for clubs, don't they really? Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so uh, there's lots to go on there. So let's uh, move into. I mean, obviously, before we move into spoiler territory, we can both attest here that we absolutely adore this series. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, now we like a lot of sci-fi, uh, and we can, we can agree on that on a lot. Um, and we are rather spoiled for choice at the moment. But I think for me, um, the Expanse has a, a, a higher level emotional hook for me. I think because at its at its um, finest points is always a story about people rather than space aliens or mm-hmm. um, sp- areas in space. It's very much about people, about the families, about the relationships, loyalties, um, betrayals. Um, but it doesn't roam into um, you know sitcom or soap territory. It's not like the Dynasty or Dallas in its relationships. It's very much a fine. There's a really good balance with drama. Uh, and you know, mystery box as well as every series has this running mystery box, mystery box running through it, which keeps yes. the viewers entertained. So, you know, if you haven't watched it, um, I would say definitely give it a go. We'll, we'll do our little uh, review of what we think, and then we'll move into some sort of a more deeper spoiler. Yeah, discussion, and it, it's on Prime. So if you've got Prime, then yeah. you've got you've already got this. Um, so it started on Sci-Fi, didn't it? Yeah, so it started on yeah. Sci-Fi, um, and they did three seasons on Sci-Fi. And then um, ran out of cash, and then yeah. uh, essentially cancelled it. The, they, the cast, yeah, I think uh, whether it was the cast or the show, basically petitioned Bezos to fund it, and he was a, they were in a time when they were acquiring any show that they could, and they were like, yeah, we'll we'll fund this. And also, so I think Bezos timing. is a big fan of space, isn't he? We, as we know oh, recently, he is, yeah. But I do, I so, think, I think it was a, a good, timing good timing for them as well yeah. as anything because. Yep. They don't have like limit limit this budget, but no. actually the areas that they have to cover are really expansive. So they cover a lot of different areas, um, and yeah, no, they still make them uh, like really rich, which is good. You don't feel like they're pinching pinching money or anything like that. No, it doesn't. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like there's um, corners being cut. Definitely, no. Um, yeah, so so you can now watch all six on series on on Amazon if you are a member of Prime. I did watch the first three when I back when I had um, a Sky mm-hmm. account because I think Sci Fi was on the Sky channels, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, there's quite a gap between season three and season four. There is a gap, uh, yeah. Between which I I think I got rid of Sky, and serendipitously I still had Amazon, so I could still watch it. Mm. Um, brilliant. Okay, so uh, again, um, I have the first book, which is in the series is. Help me out here, Alex. So um, the, there's the quite well, they have quite wordy names. So yeah. the first book's called Leviathan Wakes. Right, um, makes sense. So and uh, so yeah, the first one's called Leviathan Wakes. Then you've got oh. Caliban's War, uh, Ab- cool, uh, yeah. Abaddon's Gate, uh, Sibylla Burn. Um, then there's Nemesis Games, uh, Babylon Ashes. Uh, Persepolis Rising. So you can see they're really um, leaning into this like um, 70s space opera type cycle. Yeah. The, uh, titles. Um, and then uh, Tiamat's, uh, Tiamat's Wrath. Um, that's That was one of the um, 
that was one of the latest ones. I mean, the and good then, thing about these names is they don't give away any of the plot from the series. No, exactly. Initially, it started good. off with, hmm, where's Leviathan's Waken? And then what you realise is that very quickly, they, 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 re, they, they don't mean anything. They're just a name. Yeah. And then the final one is called Leviathan Falls. Yeah. So um, so yeah. I do intend to, to, to read those books as well. I'm, I'm currently reading um, the, the recent released um, um, uh, Star Wars, the... Um, Oh, Life of the Jedi books. <laughs> All right. Um, so the, 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 the latest one is the third one. So once I finish that, I'll, I'll kick into James A. Corey mode and, w- and plow my way through them. I yeah, think. they are worth they're worth worth listening to. Um, and they All reading, yeah, 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 all reading. Yeah, they're really they're good. They're good read. They're it's interesting because they they take normally take the perspective of James Holden. Um, yeah. They don't always. They sometimes take the perspective of other characters. Um, but it's it's what's interesting is that you know obviously you can't do that in a in a in a in a TV series. Well, you say that, but I do. And again, um, let's do spoiler alerts now before <laughs> people get. Um, I do. I do feel like, as the viewer, I am James Holden most of the time. I do feel like, like it's his story mostly, and he is uh, the the actor who plays him, Stephen Strait. He is in. He's he's actually, um, you know, when you when you look at the the cast list for this. He's in the most episodes. Him yes. And, oh, and yeah, the yeah. main Ross and Anti characters. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it does feel like it's his story. Obviously, the the TV series has different points of view, but it does feel like it's it's following him. I think it and, is. Yeah. yeah. The, the thing is, I think it starts um, and ends with him, doesn't it? It, it starts James. and ends with him. Yeah. I think yeah. I think um, there are different characters that kind of have a a, a, a key bit um, uh, uh, throughout each 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 of the books and, and the, the series too. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think also it was, it was written with a view to be made into a, a film or TV series. So I think, I think that was the, there was the thinking they hadn't written uh, a, a screenplay at the same time or no. anything, but what they had done is basically said, we're going to do this expansive thing. It would be amazing if we could have it. Um, it would be amazing if we could have this uh, as a TV series um, they have that that connection anyway, so they were like, "Yep, yeah, that's that's where we're heading." So that's what that's what they're going for. Okay, so let's let's uh, try and get our heads around the these six seasons. Um, so we'll, we'll um, I think we'll, at this point, um, just trying to recollect recollect our favourite parts of the seasons um, and, the, and the themes. Now, I, I don't know about you, I feel like for me, the ones I the ones I remember the best, are the ones I feel the best. Now, I really. Um, and I think I watched season one and two twice before season three. I think I re- because I f- when you go mm-hmm. into the third season, if you if you haven't watched them recently, because the, the it's a very um, kind of complex threaded plot. There's lots of stories going through this, and I felt um, when I hit sort of season three and season four, I had to go back and watch them again. Now I don't think that's a bad thing, but I think um, sometimes. If a, TV, if a TV series demands you rewatch them to remember them, you, you've got to be a, a kind of a committed, um, a committed watcher more than anything else. Um, yeah. But a one thread that really runs through this um, for me is Miller. Mm-hmm. Um, play, is that Thomas Jane who plays Miller, isn't it? That's right. Yeah. Um, who I've seen somewhere before, and I can't remember which. I'll have to check his his. Um, TVography or filmography uh, later mm-hmm. on the podcast, but he's he, he's brilliant because he's uh, I, I like I like a noir detective noir story, and you kind of have this detective noir feeling to it as he's as, as he's going through, um, and he is a, obviously he's this um, detective cop type character. He's investigating um, Julie Mao's disappearance. Uh, he's based on Ceres, and he's a belter, isn't he? Yes, that's right. He is. But he doesn't seem to be very well respected as a belter. He gets a lot of grief from his compadres. He, the thing is, because he works for the Inners, because Ceres is owned by the Inners, and yeah. and it, because he does, he works as a cop for the Inners. He's yeah. he's seen as as a a sellout turncoat. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. So you have his thread, then you have obviously the thread of James Holden, um, with the whole setup with. Him being this sort of ice freighter crew member, mm-hmm. um, and he's on—it's a Canterbury, isn't it? Um, yes. 
and they're on the way to Ceres. So, uh, and again, another thing I think this series does really well is how it kind of gently drip feeds in all the different characters all, uh, all over the, the solar system and as they start to kind of converge or their, their paths cross. Yes, so they you, introduce you, a, them really nicely, yeah, don't they? As a viewer, you, you, you kind of um, spectate the coincidences that occur that make, make them fall, you know, go past each other. Mm. And I think that's really clever. I mean, the, the, again, why this series seems so... Uh, believable is the fact that you know these these instances aren't too contrived to make things happen in a TV series where you see other things are, you know, yeah. when they're kind of um, you know, uh, you know, wink, winking at the winking at the view and saying, "Ah, this is going to happen." I think that's really good the way that they they kind of drop things slowly till they converge. Um, so he goes and investigates. Um, I think the the, the apartment of, of Julie Mariners. That's right. Major plot points kind of stem off from there. I, I like his story. And I like his search and his uncovering, but I also like the sort of the parallel threads of what's going on. And we, you know, the, the main theme, probably the first three or four seasons, really, is the proto molecules, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think um, I think it's probably yeah, probably right. For the first four seasons, it's it's strongly uh, driven by the yeah proto molecule and, and and it's uh, things that happen uh, to them while they they try and resolve things and and, and try and, and uh, save everyone and i think it it's it's as you go further through the series in four for example and five yeah it, it's it comes back to the crew and um focuses less on there's still an element of that, but it's not. It's not. It doesn't drive the arc as much as it as much as it used to. How how could I forget that uh, Thomas Jane played the Punisher? There you go. <laughs> um, yes, that he looks familiar now. He's got a bit more hair in this bollocks of it. Yeah. Okay, so then we obviously we've got we've got the the uh, original setup for how the crew of the mm-hmm. Rossinanti, which we know so well now, six seasons in, how that formed, and it's this kind of, again this this collision of events that happens to James Holden and his crew. Um, when they bump into, uh, it's the Mars Navy, is it the Martian Navy? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, um, although, MCRN. Yeah, although other things also arrive to the Canterbury, and in fact, they're the ones that destroy the Canterbury. And you, you don't really know at this stage of the season what they are. And, and again, apart from the proto molecule, which is kind of the only really reference to anything alien in this, se- this series. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Initially, I thought these 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 attacking craft were alien as well, um, but yeah. it kind of hints. It it, it it doesn't it doesn't give make it very clear. And it's quite cool that it, again it teases you with the story out, which is you know a really good technique. Yeah. Um, and then we move into um, throughout season one and two, um, Holden becomes friends with the OPA and with mm-hmm. Fred Johnson, um, and that starts to introduce the stronger characters. Uh, within the Belter crew, with the Belter community, yes, um, and we'll talk about them later on. Um, but it's kind of uh, you know, this is a set up season, this first season, isn't it? Really? Oh, um, completely, and, yeah. And uh, the the final, in fact, the final episode of this season is called Leviathan Wakes, mm-hmm. um, and that is really what happens on Eros, isn't it? Yes, which is, this, and I again, I really like that. That was very tense, wasn't it? That whole that whole kind of two, three episodes lead up to the end of the season. Mm. How did you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because it 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 brings you into it so much that you kind of it, it, when you see it happening, um, you it feels quite claustrophobic because you kind of yeah. feel like you're 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 oh no, you know, there's there is peril that you feel worry about and that kind of thing. Um, and I think the pacing is so good that um, yeah. as you go through, you know, it just it, it ticks along. It's a, a, a nice pace. Um, you always get to the end of this uh, episode and then something gets alluded to and you go, oh, and you've got to watch the next thing. So it's great. It's made for binging to an extent. It is. And it is a great series to binge. Um, yeah. And so, I think it's better to binge this than try and watch it uh, episode episode because yeah. of the the, the, co- the complexity of the storyline. No, I think you're I think you're right. You think you have to. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, what's nice about it is that you know you do get these anchor characters as you go through yeah. the 
um, as she goes through the seasons. Um, and Miller is a big c- character for the the, mm. the the first half of uh, the um, uh, series. And yeah. uh, so he really, you know, he really does anchor and kind of when you're thinking, look, what is that about? He's thinking, well, no, tell me, show me this, tell me about this. And so it kind of really helps um, uh, ground the series. And, and I also like its approach to, rea- you know, trying to keep to reality as much as it can. So, you know, time's obviously a bit flexible on a TV series because, you, you know, you can't you can't wait months while you're you're no. um, think, doing it. But um, their approach to things like gravity, for example, and, and thinking about how it might work would you know and how communications work for example and things like yeah. that those are things that are often glossed over in um sort we of see, other tv shows you that, see it all the time don't you when they're yeah. on the ross and Auntie, the fact they're always wearing those boots on on the ship and yes very very often you'll see things like just little things that little um aspects of life normal day-to-day life like a cup mm. of coffee or something or they they will they almost use the gravity in, in, mm-hmm. in uh, as humans would adapt and get used to these things as kind of a, a tool yeah um and i think that's really again really clever and, and on your point of these these kind of bookmark characters throughout the mm-hmm. series what is really good about these characters is is that they um when if and when they leave the season for whatever reason whether they mm-hmm. die or move on that really affected me because you yeah. really you really root for those characters and when they are no longer with us you miss them and i think um i think that worked better in this ser- this see this this tv show than in shows like game of thrones and i don't yeah. know why i think i think i sympathize with these i guess because our lives are nearer to these people than they are to this sort of fantasy epic series but I just felt I felt more in a, a connection to these characters and so I was more affected by their leaving the series and which, whichever way it was and we mm-hmm. there's one particular um character we ought to talk about really mm-hmm. um who was a Martian um and again I'm trying to remember he what was his character's name um so you're thinking of the pilot yeah, what's uh, his name? So it was um, Alex. Uh, Alex, Alex Kamal. Yeah, Alex yeah. Kamal. So he um, was the pilot in, of Rosinante. And like the, the, you know, Hong we're jumping ahead a little bit here, but um, the scene where he finally leaves the series, I, I found it very, very moving. Um, despite the actor's background, now the actor, there were some uh, accusations of um, misbehaviour on set, weren't there? And um, yeah, so he was written out of the he show. Was written out of the series, um, didn't he really? Uh, but the thing yeah. thing was, he was written out, and it, you know, and it did feel quite shocking when he went because it happened very suddenly. But but I think it it, it carried the story forward, and um, what was nice is that they didn't pretend that he never existed. Um, yeah, which I think is is really important, you know, because otherwise it undermines the closeness and family that they talk about when they talk about the Rosnan. Well, they. They do reference him later on in the series as well, don't they? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Even in the final of the season, it's a character. It's a, the actor's guy called Cass Anvar. Um, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I think they have of, of all the TV series I've seen. They, they, again, they've handled that very well. I thought. I do. Mm-hmm. I did miss him as a character. I think it's a shame, but there's not much you can do about that. And I think they did, as you say, did it very well. Um, any other standout characters for you? I mean, there are loads here, um, <laughs> um, but. It's so hard to know where to. Yeah. So it's, it's hard to know where to start. Um, there's so many good characters because each of them have an area to shine in the yeah. six six seasons. Um, I think you know we we might want to go into the main the main uh, Rosinante cast a bit later on. Yeah. But, but the ones that the sort of periphery of the cast are also really strong. Um, the ones that come to mind uh, a lot are. Uh, Christian Avicerala, um, yeah, such a str- it's such a strong, um, uh, such a strong role. Um, She's totally. played by Shora Agadeshlu, isn't she? That's right, yeah. yeah. And it, you know, it's, it was meant for her, uh, really. It really does read that way. It's almost um, written for her, isn't it? Really, yeah. This, this it really role. felt like that completely. Um, and she holds up uh, a lot of the voice and thinking of the of Earth. Because yeah. I think otherwise, what you'd end up doing is you'd end up saying, 
God, what a bunch of idiots! You know, uh, yeah. we don't. You know, you wouldn't. You wouldn't relate to Earth at all, even I mean, though and there are we're from plenty there. of idiots, though, aren't there? Yeah. In that season, um, totally. Because, uh, because at the beginning, the head of the United Nations is um, Secretary General Esteban Sorrento Gillis. Yeah, and I can't remember if it's him or if it's the guy who works for him that's got this sort of part of this big. I think it's season three, isn't it? Where they reveal yes. this. Or, is it season three or season two? They reveal this kind of is it called like a shadow government, which yes. is link, links to research on the proto molecule and experiments mm-hmm. going on. And again, <laughs> we're looking at current events, a very believable plot. Again, um, yeah. So you know, <laughs> she she's brilliant in that because she's she's she, at times she's a victim, at times she's the she's the villain, isn't she? There's yes. She does some pretty nasty things to her. We talked about earlier on to a belter and this belter interrogation scene is very um, hard to watch but it's, it's, mm. it's it, the point of it is, is that she's, she's got to make, she's, she's a tough lady and has to do tough things um, and I think, again, makes for some great story later on when she starts to regret what she's done and, and kind of a, you know, a rite of passage for her really, isn't it? Um, yes. But yeah. She's yeah. a brilliant character. No, it's I such a good character. I love her potty voice as well. Her potty mouth is brilliant as well. <laughs> well, it, and that's in the that's in the books as well. So yeah. it's, it's kind of it, it, it. There were things that came from the books that you you you're just like, yeah, I'm glad they kept that yeah. in. And and I think what's nice about her is she's driven by, um, yeah, she's driven not just for a love of Earth, but but she sees the bigger picture. Um, now the thing is, she's prepared to do anything to to get that bigger picture. Yeah. Um, however, you know she has this sort of, I don't know what the right word is. She's just got this loyalty that um, to to certain members of uh, the cast that you you kind of they, they it sort of play, it shows it shows a softer side to her that. Well, I, I mean, think, her relationship to Holden's is is kind of the special. It, it, well, that and it's Bobby so Draper, important, isn't it? Yeah, but yeah. I think I think um, the yeah. thing is, Bob her her relationship with Bobby Draper is 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 kind of nurturing. Um, yeah, men- which is quite mentoring role. Mentoring, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then I think for um, when when you, when you think about Holden, she she does relate to you know they're both big picture people, but the the thing is that she understands all the consequences, whereas. Uh, Holden is is driven by doing what's right, even if it's stupid, uh, yep. or, or is going to cause bigger problems. And so, so the, what's nice is she she's very blunt about her issues with that. Um, and again, it's great because you kind of otherwise it would become uh, uh, very woolly, and it wouldn't have you know you wouldn't really think you know oh hang on a minute and, and James Holden's cocked up here he's he's caused caused a problem. But but um, Avasarala will spell it out and just say right yeah. yeah you you thought you were doing the bite thing but by doing that you actually made it worse and uh, and actually we go oh yeah good point it doesn't matter but it's more it's more just one of those things that kind of helps ground um, uh, ground uh, Holden so that he doesn't become this you know godlike figure that just nothing touches and and that kind of thing I think that's really important. So, you know, I, I want to talk about Bobby Draper. I think she's an mm-hmm. amazing character as well, yes. um, played by Frankie Adams. Yes. Um, now, um, I do remember reading an article a while back about how tricky it was to cast her. Mm-hmm. Because, tell me about it, because the books the books have, have uh, caused this problem, didn't they? Well, um, they did. They, they started off by saying that she was huge. Um, yeah. And, and obviously that's what set her apart from... You know, yeah, yeah. There are um, uh, beefy women in the, the Mars well, Navy, I mean, just like there are anywhere. But I think yeah, they you, made such a big part of it. Her size was a was an, a, um, you know, part of her character, um, and so they had to try and find someone on screen that that kind of reflected that. Um, and I think I think they did a really good job. Um, but I, I think also it's it's her personality is strong, and that's that's what comes across so well through. Let um, let her. me read. Uh, that description out you mentioned from the book. Mm-hmm. There's a quote here. So, as you say, it was very hard to cast her because of this description. Bobby was not the right shape to fit into one of the standard suits, and the Marines made her jump through a series of flaming hoops every time she requisitioned a new custom one. Yeah. At a bit over two metres tall, she was only slightly above average height for a Martian male. But thanks in part to her Polynesian ancestry, 
She weighed in at over 100 kilos at 1G. None of it was fat, but her muscles seemed to get bigger every time she even walked through a weight room. As a mm. Marine, she trained mm. all the time. Now, I think the most important thing they had to find was a Polynesian actor for the role. Yes. Um, so I think they went through like a New Zealand-based casting um, so process because obviously that's the, the region mm. they're looking at. Um, she she was not you know she hadn't done many acting jobs beforehand, but she was Samoan I think actually um, and was one point eight meters tall and still is probably yes. But basically she she looked exactly what they imagined, um, and I think initially when when she first started on the series, you could slightly sense her slight um, inexperience in acting, just very very slightly. Mm. But I think actually she then settled into the role really quickly. Um, she, you know, she 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 obviously has real life experience prior to to working on the expanse. She was, but she did she was a boxer I think for a while, so mm-hmm. she was fit. Um, I think sometimes you get these sort of serendipitous choices, don't you, of, of people that work really really well. Yeah, that's right. Um, and I think she's a great character. Again, strong female, great character. Mm-hmm. I, I'd like to mention. Um, uh, one character I really liked, uh, David Strathern, who plays uh, Ashford, mm-hmm. um, who's a really charismatic, unique-looking individual for the series, I thought. Um, and I recently saw him in another film. I went to see um, uh, Guillermo del Toro's uh, Nightmare Alley uh, All right. last night. Uh, and he was in that as well, and as a, as a very different character. Um, but I thought he was really a really interesting character in the series with his... You know his battle scars from being burnt, and um, how he kind of he showed his loyalties and worked with the the other parts, the other members of the team on on the um, was it called the what was it called the big ship? It wasn't called the Leviathan. It was something else. The really really big the ship they nicked from the um, that uh, religious cult that were going through space. Oh, yeah. oh, that's kind. Of... Help me out here. We'll come back to that. We'll oh, figure it out. It. Don't worry. Yeah. Oh, it's really um, annoying. I know Behemoth. Behemoth, that's it. That's, that's it. sort of rotating, sort of barrel-shaped spaceship. Right. Which is, again, for me, uh, quite an interesting um, aspect or character to the series with the spaceships. Yes. Um, yeah, so I liked him a lot um, and was very sad when he went. Um, and again, it felt like he was a bit of a mental character for drummer, wasn't he, really? Yes, yeah, it was. Because she was very upset when he went as well. Um, and, he, you know, um, so yes, any, any other characters that stand out for you before we move on? Um... Yeah, it's it's a good point. I think. Yeah, I mean, Kamina Drummer. I yeah. think I think I think for the latter uh, part of the um, series, I think it's it's a really strong uh, performance from her. Um, yeah. What's interesting is that there's this sort of um, played by Cara G, isn't she? Yes, that's right. Um, yeah. But there's this strength and um, sort of anger that's that's really visceral in her, but then. And when you think about um, Belters, uh, you, you, you're thinking of them as sav- you know, savages a bit. Yeah. Um, and then what's nice is that they um, ground that with um, her compassion for um, her family, her extended family, and how that works. Yeah. Um, and it, and I think that really that really helps sort of helps us understand and get under a skin a bit more. Um, and and it becomes really important when you get to the, the last uh, uh, seasons and stuff. So I think. That's really uh, really had an impact on me. That one, the 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 relationships that she had with her crew were very interesting. And again, yes, I really liked how the series didn't dwell on them. It was very natural that they would sort of you know have share partners or had two or three person couples, if that makes sense, on the ship. Yeah, and in you know in that close quarter space, that's one of the one of the things to pass the time, isn't it? But I thought that was really sensitively done as well. It wasn't, yes, that's it wasn't, right. And very forward thinking and just normal. There was no there was no um emphasis on it whatsoever. I thought that was really good. Um she's actually going to be the main character in a new Telltale game as well, isn't she? Oh yes, of course so she they're, is. Yes. They're doing like a prequel of, of um Drummer's Life before the series of Expanse. Mm. So, you know, diehard Expanse fans will probably play that. I might I might play that. And it's again, it's quite a clever um subject matter to to go into. Um, I don't know if any of her previous life is revealed in the books. Like, pr- pr- do you have any flashbacks for Drummer's life or not? Really, any no. Detail. There is. There's little, but it's not. 
it just it doesn't add a lot of flavor to what what you see in the the tv series yeah i mean i think what's interesting is actually um one of the the things that's good about the expanses is actually really pretty faithful to the books um the, it doesn't deviate very often um, right there are deviations which you can talk about but it, but it's not it's not as many as you'd think um and I think that's kind of the, the you know you think to yourself oh you know I'm, I'm obviously missing a lot of background, yeah. um, but actually you know they they do a good job of explaining what's important in the TV series, and 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 you don't you're not missing that much. I do think the listening the books are great uh, they're great read so, um, but I think that kind of shows the fact that they were you know showrunners as well and they obviously had that in mind so they were kind of painting the picture not just in the writing book but also they were like visually we're going to do it this way or visually we could hear it here's what we could do and so i think that's what helps because it kind of yeah it feels really loyal to the to the um, source material the um, the um the, the final episode of every season is the name of the book yes that's book. right yeah it's got like the culmination of yeah, the, and it makes sense season. when you when you when you look at what happens in the episodes for that see for that episode as well. So there are there are I mean, it, all, it all hangs together very well. Mm. Um, so I think we've 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 discussed a lot of things about the series, and obviously um, season six finished very very recently. But let's talk about the crew, the Ross and Anti, yeah, because um, I think they all they all deserve um, a bit more detail. Um, Stephen Strait's brilliant. I think he he kind of portrays the. Um, downtrodden leader very very well because he's always mm -hmm. he always looks like he's in pain the whole time or as if he's got a headache <laughs> the whole time yeah um and there was actually a little bit of speculation more recently because he has kind of um he's more wiry isn't he in the last couple of episodes last couple yes. of seasons and i think he was just demonstrating uh from what i hear he was showing how uh holden has changed since he was you know living his relatively carefree days as, as an ice crew minor to him kind of having the world on his shoulders and literally the the the, the solar system on his shoulders at some in some cases and yeah. i think that can change him uh, change a person so I, I, I don't i don't bemoan his him changing the way he looks in the, in the season i think it works really mm. well he kind of starts a little more like a belter doesn't he towards the end really yes well this is mm. it i think he, he his um loyal uh, his his loyalties sort of kind of start to change um yeah I think it's is it's actually the later you go through the um, uh, series, like particularly the fifth and the sixth se season, they're h harder for him actually because yeah. it, it's there's not a lot for him to show what he that's doing, um, but actually he's got all of this weight on his on his shoulders that he's constantly had for, as, from the start, um, and it's just got worse progressively. Um, and that's something that is explored a little bit more in the books. Um, right. And you kind of feel like really downtrodden and, and worn. Whereas I think in the TV, um, uh, TV, it's that's it, it's hard to, to for that to come but, across yeah. with what he what he had to work with um, from a, a story point of view. I do. Um, I do feel like he's he's there's less of him in the last two seasons. Yes. Let's focus on him as a character. There, there are reasons. Which isn't a bad that. thing. Yeah, it's not a bad so, thing. no, and I think that's one. There is, I think the thing is, there's a plot line that comes along in the next uh, season. Oh, sorry, the next book. Yeah. Um, well, af, af, set after season six. Set after season six. Yeah. Yeah. So there is a there is a um, a plot line there that 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 really takes that to an extreme. Um, but the the challenge is that. You know, they kind of need to make sure he had had plenty to do um, to start. You know, uh, for for those these seasons because they're not strictly about him in the books. Um, no, okay. and and I think that's the that's the the, the slight difference is there. Um, but no, is he he plays it so well um, that I do think that that's something. You know, it's just the real strength of him is is acting is is really. You know, compelling to watch him, and he comes. You, you, you can't help but relate to some of the choices that he has to make. You know, and, and I, I think you're right. I think the same could be said for Dominique Tipper, who plays Naomi Nagata, because um, she she's sharing burdens that are on a different level to to Jim yes. Holden. But but I think I mean one standout series of episodes I really enjoyed was her dealing dealing with being stuck on that bomb ship, the ship that was a bomb. 
Yes. And and her using all her experiences as, as a as a spacer, mm-hmm. as an engineer, as a fighter to try and and also to sort of thread her way through the um, the labyrinthine um, kind of challenges that um, Marco in Aris has has left her on that ship. Yeah. To, to signal her friends, to convince them that she, you know, the, the ship that she's on needs to be picked up and looked at. I thought mm. she, you know, that that again, essentially, she's doing a monologue, doesn't she? She's it's a one man show for her. Yes, that, that that's right. And I wonder if perhaps um, some of the episodes in that series were influenced by the pandemic. Um, mm. So I don't know because she's, you know, there's, there's a lot more separation in those series, a lot less, less extra extra cast and less. Um, so I, I wonder if that was it, but I think she was excellent in that, and I think again, she 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 fulfills her role brilliantly as uh, as a kind of the, the strong other half of Jim without without really being um, a damsel in distress, if that makes sense. Yes, and I think her character really tries not to do that. She's yeah. she's so strong as a character, um, and genuine, it, isn't she? She's a very yeah, genuine person. Exactly, and I think as as the seasons go on you 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 get more of her backstory and i think that that helps even more to help you understand oh okay there's a lot more to this um uh, to this character um and you kind of just understand a lot more about where some of her anger comes from and and that kind of thing so i think um yeah it's a it's a fascinating role for her that she's she's played it's really really done well so let's talk about um, Amos, Amos Burton, who mm-hmm. I love as a character. And I, I mean, <laughs> first of all, it's been fascinating watching his beard growing over the seasons. Um, yeah, he loves it. Because if you look back, guy, obviously, Wes Chatham plays him. Um, if, you, if you go back and look at him in the first season and how he changes, it's brilliant. I would imagine he decided, the actor decided to grow a beard. And, that, and, that, and there was a nice gap in time, wasn't there, between one of the seasons for him being off somewhere. Yeah, that's right. Um, but he's an amazing. I mean, he's, he's an amazing presence, isn't he? He's a big guy. Mm-hmm. Um, again, perfectly cast for this role. I mean, you, you, you probably say more than I can about that because you've read the books. Um, but what a great character! Um, and he doesn't strike. You know, he could be. There could be a risk of making him very two dimensional, but I don't think they do. Um, yeah. And it's that whole series of episodes where he's back on Earth. When I think it's just is it just after or just before? Um, the asteroids are falling. I think it's just during. So, isn't it? um, so it's before. Um, yeah. Before they 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 fall, um, and then see kind of the in effects. the books it's slightly different. Um, yeah. Because in the books you you read the the thing is that um, uh, Clarissa is is rescued from uh, a prison. Um, that's right. She's Earth. she's Julie Mal's sister, isn't she? Yeah, that's right. So, so and she, does he call her Peaches or something? Peaches is uh, what she calls yeah, her. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, but the thing is, it's it's she's rescued from Earth, an Earth prison, whereas actually in the in the books, it's, a high sec- it's um, yeah, high security prison. But in the yeah. books, it's actually in 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 Luna, um, and and right. So, but they they I think I can't remember the ins and outs, but I think there's a reason why Luna gets gets attacked. So so. That this is the one character I, was, uh, I think was a little bit forgetful of or confused. So yeah. help me out here. So I do remember her being on. Was it the um, the Beermouth and trying to kill Holden? Yeah. So what what happens is that She's you modern, have isn't she? you have um, in season one you've got uh, Juliet Mao, who's yeah. um, old eldest child of uh, uh, an Earther. Uh, um, Plutocrat who like, obviously owns Jules, owns Jules Jules Pierre, Pierre Mal. Mal. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Who ends up who ends up spearheading the um uh, proto, proto-molecule, proto-molecule uh, research. research. Yeah. That's right. And 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 bankrolling that and has his pockets um and uh, sorry, fingers very much in the uh, UN generals um yeah. uh, sort of what's the word? Um Pies. like agenda, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and so, so that's that's where things have that, that things start, um, and essentially that radicalizes um, her. So, so she ends up becoming uh, uh, her sister Cla- uh, Clarissa becomes radicalized um, yeah. because she blames Holden for the situation that her fa- her family has, um, and uh, so she then plot. There's a terrorist plot. We're obviously 
spoiling this, but um, yeah. there's a terrorist plot that um, she she instigates, um, and that um, then has impacts in the uh, ring space. Um, so many areas, really. Isn't yeah, it? it has huge impacts, and then eventually she gets taken um, uh, to put taken to prison, um, and she apologizes for it because she realizes that it's She's not really Holden's, yeah it's not really Holden's yeah. fault he was just he was an actor in it he was in the yeah. in the uh, um uh, things but it wasn't actually you know it wasn't actually him that had caused this this issue but she yeah, has it, these kind of these mods in her body which use up a lot yes. of energy but make her super super like a superwoman doesn't it basically yeah yeah she moves really quickly and yeah. um uh you know has extra strength and stuff and and what's nice about it is that they don't uh, I, like Overdo turn her it. into an overpowered person. Yeah, it, it obviously it does it is key to some parts of the story. Yeah, well, it wipes her out, doesn't it? And she needs lots of food afterwards. Yeah, but it's, it's but what's nice sp- about sporadic. that is it kind of there's that that uh, vulnerability alongside alongside yeah. that strength. Um, I can't quite work out the relationship between her and and uh, Amos. Whether there's a, I know they they have a little romantic clinch in their journey across the earth to get away from Earth. But they, they do in it, the they do in the um, TV TV series. Yeah. But but in in the book, it's a lot more like a brother sister relationship. Sure. I think. Oh, and you, you but yeah you get you get you get facets of that in the series as well. Yeah. Because they're not all over each other on the Ross and Auntie, and he's very much looking out for her and vice versa. I so think, I think he, perhaps they, they they lean towards that 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 sibling relationship more towards the end of the season. Perhaps. Yeah. Thing is, uh, Amos um, essentially was reborn. When he went to space, so yeah, he and and so he he has had that issue where he's, you know, had a had a dark past, and he's 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 gone and, and changed, and so Hence I think he meeting his brother wasn't he? he met his that's brother right. on Earth, and that was his past as well. Yeah. So I think that's why he um, sees that in Clarissa and wants to support that because um, he knows that when he had that, he had to do it all on his own, whereas he, yeah. he can see that. Clarissa doesn't need to do it all on her own because he can have Amos to help her. Um, and I think that's a really nice, nice touch. Yeah. You know, it gives compassion to what, as a character, uh, Amos is a very cold, calculating, cal- cal- uh, sorry, cold cal- character. But he's kind of... He's got a soft centre, though, isn't he, really? He, he does have some soft bits. Yeah. But, but behind that, he's also got this this view that he's still very much broken and very, um, you know, he would do things oh, that other damaged people Damaged goods, would not. you mean? Yeah, very damaged. Yeah. To the point where you'd almost, you know, he, he sort of describes himself as a monster sometimes. Um, and and that, that kind of, he doesn't, it's not dwelled on in a TV series, but um, I think it kind of, it, it shows that there's there's two sides of him and, and obviously they work really well for, the Rosinante because they need a muscle. They need someone to muscle, yeah. be the muscle, and and someone who will take it, you know, and and make sure that, you know, the 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 way they describe uh, Amos is that you know he'll be the last one alive um, uh, until he's dead, and then like but, I think I mean the best example of that is right in the end of season season six where he's he's um him and uh, bobby are attacking yes. the the rail guns yes and it's getting a bit desperate and she's getting pelted with um, uh, artillery and he basically jumps on her and protects her with his own body doesn't yeah. he yeah yeah exactly um, it's a cracking scene and it, it kind of it, it kind of sums him up in in one sort of 15 second scene mm. that he's mm. you know he's it, it, it's a bit it's a bit um Foolhardy, but he's going to do it anyway, and hang, hang the, you know, hang the results. Hang yeah, the and I think it, the, the, it, yeah, I think so, and I think that's that just kind of explains his, his he is that loyal. You know, he would give his life for someone, uh, for someone who believes in. Um, so yeah, that's that's the, that's what what makes him go. That's that's the thing. So um, we've talked uh, in length about the series and the characters, but let's um, just finally. Um, examine uh, what next now um, towards the end of well actually threaded throughout season six was I I frankly felt a a, quite a confusing storyline that I did follow in the end but thought what was the point of this knowing this was the last season on Amazon for Expanse so now I I, I can garner from what I've heard that this is 
what ha- this is kind of they threaded in some plot from the later books into this. Yeah, don't, so do you want me to explain... At this stage, don't be too spoilery about this. Yeah, do you want me to explain the main th- themes that Theme. are happening? Yeah, so so yeah. there's several things within the last season that that feel like they're, they're very separate, and they are to an extent. Um, one of the things is that the TV, uh, the episodes often start with a little prologue. Like a, like a cold is, start, isn't it, really? That's yeah. it. And they're, they're, But they're starting there... In uh, on a planet called Laconia, uh, which is one of the ring, uh, uh, one of the ring uh, uh, through the ring gates, sure. is as a so there's a small system that happens to have really lush um, uh, Earth-like um, environment, um, and and essentially has been populated by a number of um, uh, Mars defectors. So Mars Are they gen, researchers gen, as well. Yes, but they're but but they're 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 essentially driven by Mars uh, a, a Mars faction of generals and, uh, and right. that that have basically say uh, have basically spun off from Mars and gone completely on their own. So they've um, almost succeeded succeeded from Mars as well. Completely, right? yeah, absolutely. Right. So what happened? What happened was, um, and that's Winston Duarte's the High Council, who who essentially essentially was a, a, a quite high general in the Martian yeah. Navy and he's basically led this you know I'm not going to stay on Mars I'm going to go and create my uh, I'm going to go and populate my and colonize my own Mars yeah and and but it's going to look it's going to be like earth because it's not we don't need to worry about terraforming it will be fine so he he cherry picks a um basically perfect um a perfect uh planetary system yeah. That that has all of the resources that he needs, and so they they jet a few um, ships, basically jet through the uh, ring space to this gate, and then one they they uh, he has um, made a basically made a uh, deal. Um, so he's made he's made a a, a deal with uh, Marco Inaris, who's the leader right, of the Free yeah. Navy, to to yeah. to get that. And so, so he's like, okay, I, I'll have that one because uh, all, all uh, assignments of uh, planetary systems from the ring through the ring are all assigned by the UN. And so they basically s- just circumvented that completely and just said, no, no, I'm having this one. It's the best. I've spotted stuff in there. This is yeah, yeah. this is mine. He's um, cherry picked, basically, isn't he? Absolutely, yeah. So, yeah. so there is a in the future books. There's there is a story arc, and and you can see that being alluded to there. In the meantime, right. you've got um, uh, Anaros, who's led the free uh, the free uh, navy. So he's really risen up, um, and and really taken taken the the rungs from uh, the OPA leader. Um, yeah, from uh, uh, from Fred and from um, Jared Harris's character. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So so he's taken the lead from them, and basically he's he's he because he's uh, his faction is basically one, and 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 so they're they're the lead faction. So he's 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 now got to police the um, uh, Earth system. It's also got to um, uh, deal with some of the existing stations that were UN and now uh, have, have, have annexed themselves to the Free Navy as well. Um, he also has taken control of the um, uh, Ring Gate and um, uh, the Behemoth uh, yeah. uh, that's now stationed uh, in the Ring Space. Um, and so he has to has to basically manage all of that um, and he's really overstretched and he's not managed that um he's not done this before he's he's just essentially been you know like a a leader of a faction of the opa before and now he has to inspire and 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 deal with um sort of a lot of of things that are in movement that they that he can't control and then to top this off obviously his plan and the reason that he got to take control was because he had dropped the um asteroids and in on earth yeah and so so there is con- there's obviously big consequences for that um and there'll be longer term consequences for that as well um because that reliance on earth has you know there are re- issues around that 
Well, I think so, you know, obviously, if there are if there are lots of lush available planets through the ring, there's well, you'd hope, why. yeah, you'd hope that yeah. they. That, but essentially, it's pushing people through that through that ring, um, yeah. because they can't stay in the in the solar system, um, and then you've got this alliance of Mar- uh, uneasy alliance between Mars and Earth, where yeah. they they weren't allied at all, but now but through the actions of Anaros. They've made he, them stronger, haven't they? Really? That's right. Yeah. yeah. So they they've now they're now together, um, and but they're still really stretched. And 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 so the thing is, they you know the OPA had good numbers, but against um, you know Mars and and Earth uh, fleets, um, it didn't you know it didn't reflect that well. And so man, he just managed to pull off pull up pull off a really you know genius move to to kind of really suppress all those numbers um of of ships and now they're still just trying to keep trying to catch up um and so that cat and mouse is what the whole of series uh, season six is about yeah. is that that cat yeah. and mouse between them you know who's in who's the one that's in control and and it's you know it's an interesting change from the previous season where it yeah. was very much he was in control and um, uh, Naomi, for example, was the one who is just trying to, to, to survive through all of yeah. these things going wrong. So um, so there's quite a lot of movement and things. But the, the thing is, you can see that the focus is starting to turn to the ring gate and the ring world and all of those. And these, these, these ring entities as well. Yeah. Which, again, again, don't say too much if you know. But that, I, I find, I mean, there was, there was a big cliffhanger at the end of season five when... Um, when uh, one of the uh, frigates went through, was it? Yes, I think it was, and just got completely sort of vaporized with these red things. Yes, and then you see the same fate um, being afforded to um, Marco. Yes, that's but it right. kind of does it. Does it? Uh, it was. I found it quite a really interesting way they showed it. It was almost kind of terrifying, wasn't it? It was a mm. slow mo, but showing these that like sort of space slugs in, in a different dimension, sort of raveling around him. Um, yeah. But with 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 the this this plot on the um, on the ring planets, this, you know the, the, these these creatures that can fix mm-hmm. biological entities, uh, and these uh, you know the proto molecules probably still at the back of everyone's mind, and these uh, ring entities, you know, it very much makes me feel like, and this is what I'm, I'm going to kind of focus mm-hmm. on now is that we are we could have another Expanse series, but it might not even be called the Expanse. You know, it might be like yes. through the ring or the ring or, yeah. or whatever the next book that they ever were going to write was going to be called. But it's it just feels like um, not such a spin off, but maybe they might be looking at doing a, a TV series that maybe does not was focuses less on our usual crew. So and yeah, more on other characters. I think the problem was so the prologue the re, where they that came from a short story that's part of the there's like a novella that um, right. is part of the expanse series called strange dogs now okay. i didn't actually read it um but that is essentially that's what you're you're seeing in the, the novella is is the start of that book and, and and it's only a short book anyway so it, it's not you don't they don't go into that much detail sure. but it is alluded in in the other books you know that there's um you know there's a whole um world of um you know, alien life that that has populated the work the the galaxy and 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 this part of space using the ring gates that you haven't seen that must be there um and and i think that that so there is there is room to explore that um i think the problem oh, is that the future books are still very heavily driven uh, heavily tied to the main characters sure um, and i i i don't think that they could easily continue it um which is partly why the, the, there's a conclusion that of us of sorts in, 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 okay so again don't give too much away no i'm, I'm trying not to, to <laughs> it's to do obviously to do with how the plot changes but also you, you've got to take into account that it's a big commitment for these actors um yeah to keep going and you know where in the books james holden and co will be of a certain age if they leave it too long they're going to get older here as well so they've got lots of challenges ahead, haven't they, with that, really? Um, yeah, having... also there were budgetary concerns yeah. a bit because the thing is it's it's a very expensive show. Well, they were and... saving their money for Lord of the Rings, weren't they, basically? Yeah, Amazon basically 
you know, they spent this money while they got better, got Lord of the Rings, and now they yeah. really want to spend it on Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Um, and also because I think they they they're aware that they've only, you know this this will only attract so many people, so they know yeah. how many people that is now, and they're like, okay, um, we think we've taken it where we need where it needs to yeah. go. Um, so and I, that I think is always going to be the way with all TV series is the economics will always lead always. Yeah, I think also the way that they set up these days. Yeah, I think also one of the challenges is when you get to the the uh, the the books that follow this. Things happen in there which um, would be harder to to show visually in the TV show. Sure. Okay, uh, and I think really intrigued now, Alex. Yeah, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell you any more, but, it, yeah. but it's just. And I think also, you know, uh, there is a limit to some of these books that run for a really long series. You know, there's a point where they, you drop off and you get you, you lose a bit of interest. Yeah. So I am. There's always a good knowing when to stop is always a good thing. Yeah, and I am a little bit like that with the last book, but I will get through it. But I think it's partly I'm just really busy. But but yeah. uh, I've uh, I think the thing is I've read a lot of this, so it, it does read very sim- very similar. And I okay. think that, that's that's something that um, definitely read it because it's worth it definitely worth yeah, a read. We'll do. Um, and then I think I think when you get to that point where you've uh, overtaken the TV series, I think you'll then be like. Oh, I see. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. I can understand yeah. now. I mean, I think we are definitely in an era now where we're going to see more high-budget um, TV series with less episodes, rather than kind of twenty-two, twenty-five, twenty-six season of TV series that we used to get in the olden days. Yes, absolutely. And I think the, they're I'm not down sitcoms anymore. Yeah, I'm down with it. I, I, I think you know, for all the um, good that things like series like. Um, um, Friends and Big Bang Theory did. Mm-hmm. Um, the trouble with that is, by the by, the tenth season, you're paying each of the main characters a million main actors a million dollars an episode, and it's it becomes too expensive in its own right. So I think um, mm-hmm. six to eight, or maybe six to ten episode seasons are the way forward. Um, yeah, I and think... we're seeing that with Discovery as well, aren't we? Really, with Star Trek Discovery. Yes. So I, I've, I've got nothing wrong with that. So perhaps again, uh, you will know more about this. Maybe it will be a lot more challenging. To do the next book in six to ten episodes, anyway. Um, um, who knows? Maybe, maybe. Um, yeah. I think the main thing, the main thing for me is when I think about similar TV series that um, I rate, I rate as like right at the top. Um, for me, it would be things like Battles, the new Battlestar Galactica. Yes, that is very um, good, and which is great and does a brilliant very, job very of um, building the universe around it and the lore yeah. and everything like that. Um, so say we all, mate. So say we all. Yeah, so say we all. But the thing is, when you watch that back to back, it's there's a lot to get through, you know. And it's and and I think that's the thing is nowadays people, it's you know, time, they want it? to be more. They like the story driven arcs rather than the um, TV driven arcs, where it's basically when I I need to fill this this many episodes. So this this episode will be this kind of thing. That episode will be that kind of thing. Um, because I have, you know, there's 52 weeks in a year. I've got to, I've got to fill them with things. I think yeah. now, now they're, 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 they're seeing that they don't need to do that as much. Um, so well, long th- as they have a range of things yeah. that they can offer. Um, but also they've realized going back to live scheduled style releases really helps the conversation. So going back mm-hmm. to releasing week by week. And I, th- I do think there are some seasons that, that are, that work really well to binge. Yeah. And there are other seasons that perhaps, um, it's more in their advantage to, release week to week like the book of Boba Fett for instance it's a very good sort of week to week yeah. series I'm I'm catching up with um, Witcher at the moment right and uh, yeah. that's quite w- good for binging I think Witcher it what do you is think? but I but I think because the film the ep- uh, the episodes are quite long they're like an hour or, or, yeah. or, or so they're they're quite enough for one for yes. one night one or, um, one or one or two you can watch can't you basically yeah I, I tend to what we tend to do is tend to watch Witcher and then go maybe we'll put something lighter on afterwards yeah, and then, yeah, yeah, and, then yeah. and then we'll come back you know and then we'll do the same to the next day or something like that yeah. so I, I I can I can see that so yeah no um I think this is this is the very similar you know yes you could do this back to back but it would all run into each other a bit partly because okay. that's the style yeah. of but I, I think partly that's the style of the TV show 
yeah is very action driven and it's very much um story led so i think you know you will you will eat through an a, a series a, a season pretty quickly See, I'm currently um, playing my way through uh, Star Trek Enterprise, which is the only Star Trek series I've not watched. Oh, it okay. Of, it kind of, I kind of bounced off it when I first watched it because I didn't really like it very much, but I've kind mm-hmm. of got into it and I'm starting to enjoy the characters a bit more. Um, oh, okay. You know, um, and that's, again, because of the, the format where you, they're, they're kind of one-offs, where, which does have a, a story arc through it, but they're kind of one-offs that you can watch now and then without worrying too much about remembering all the plots like The Expanse does, that you can kind of watch them. Yeah. Um, do you have anything else to add? Um, no, honest, honestly, it's just it's a delightful show. Um, it really is. It is, and it, it, I just, I love the world that it's created. Um, it's a, it's one of those things that we'll have more of a chat about this off, off the, co- uh, off the, the podcast, but... Um, yeah, uh, I'd love to see more of it, but I, I don't know how that would work. Um, so that's, that's my only, my only, uh, disappointment is, is, is like, how would we, how could we see more of, uh, Joe Miller? Cause it was the, such yeah. a good role, but we can't yeah. really. And um, the, the showrunners have not, they have not said, um, definitely no, they've, they've hinted at that perhaps other things might come. Um, so we'll have to wait and see won't we in that respect but I'm with you there I'm, I've, I've loved it I've loved every episode um, yes okay let's let's do some housework so uh, as always um, you can find myself uh, John PR Evans on Twitter and Alex is Alex Hansford um, our official Play Pause Turn um, Twitter app is at Play Pause Turn and you can go to um, our website as well playpauseturn.show uh, this has been Play Pause Turn and thank you for listening yeah.